Hi, this is Andrew from Chief Machining here. I'm going to go over a quick Designing Thursdays movie. That's going to be my new uh, series where I'm going to go over the design or the CAD work on uh, Thursday and then Machining Mondays will where we'd be doing the CAM portion of. Some projects will not have a Machining Monday, um, but most of them will, but most of the projects will. This is just a quick thing I always do when I get a new machine or a new machine comes in at work. This is helpful for laying out fixturing and uh, parts and how you could fit the maximum number of plates if you parts on the table if you had a subplate or something of that nature. So the first thing you do is know what table size it is to model it up. Now you could go out to the shop and measure your machine up or you can do what I'm going to do is just easily type this into Google whatever you have in this case I have a Mite Viper VMC 500 and that is I typed into Google and I brought up this spec sheet and you can see the table size is 26 by 14 so we're gonna start modeling that out. Let me fire up Fusion 360 real quick now this isn't needed on like a two axis CNC lathe. It really isn't helpful. This is really helpful on three, four, and five axis machines, mills in particular. But if you get to more complicated machines such as a mill turn where you got multiple spindles and uh, another turret and a milling head, then it could be beneficial and help you. So without further ado, let's get to modeling this up. Now you noticed I have my uh, Fusion 360 defaulted to modeling and certain things turned off the grid in particular. Now I go over this in my previous video so if you want to learn how to do that please check out my other video and I'll have a link of it in the description below. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is just draw a rectangle on center. <clears throat> This is my choice. You can draw it from a machine zero or one of the corners if you wish. And I just hit D for dimension. And that's 26 by 14. So I'll hit 14 and then 26. And you can see everything is black now. That means everything is fully constrained. And that is turned on. Uh, not by default, you got to go under uh, the preferences, and I show you that in my previous video. So, if you'd like to do that, please watch it. Now, we're going to hit Q for push pull, and this thickness really doesn't matter. Three inches is what I usually go because that looks about right. Now, you got the outline of your table pretty much done. Now, let's draw the T slots in. So, I'm just going to hit O for line, and it's asking what face do I want to use. I want to draw on this face. I'm going to draw only half of this because I will mirror the other side. <clears throat> there we go. Let's uh, finish this off real quick. I hit T for trim there just to clean up the geometry a little bit. <clears throat> now, the dimensions are they're 5 8 slots. That is pretty much the standard on industrial machine tools. If they're not, um, we're using like a, a Grizzly or a Tag or something else with different size non-standard slots, then you just have to go measure them or look on a uh, line. You should be able to find them. These are 5 8 <clears throat> This is 1 8 Again, divide by 2. This is 3 8 It's a and this is three quarters. Now we'll just easily going to mirror this. <clears throat> there we go. Now it's mirrored. We can easily just oh, gotta change this to a construction line, and we'll just hit Q for push or stop sketch, and we'll hit Q for push pull. Q for push pull, and we're going to drag it the other way. It changes to cut. 
changes the cut, and we're going to hit two, click match shape, and we're going to click the other end of this, bam, all the way through. Go. So you've got one slot in there. Oh, I did forget to do something. I need to dimension it from the one, the other end, and again, D for dimension. Two inches will be about right. So there we go, nice, nice T slot. Now the rest we gotta do is this pattern. And we want to pattern a feature. We're gonna click that extrude. And we're gonna, it's asking for a direction next, so we're gonna click direction. This is going the wrong way. But that's no big deal. It's going the wrong way. You can just type. Uh, we want to go two and a half, five times, but we don't want extent. We want spacing. So two and a half, negative two and a half. Oops. Right here, negative two and a half. One. There we go. And there you go. Now you have your your table all modeled out. <clears throat> now you can also I like to do this is the spindle to nose. Now if you look here you'll see spin spindle nose to tabletop. And it is twenty four inches. Now if you're not sure about these numbers, you can just go back and type it into a few locations and look up a couple different sources to ensure that's what it is. So here's just another website I came across. And see, it says it's right here, 20 and a half. So that's a lot smaller. So we'll go we'll use that one until we can measure it ourselves and confirm it. So we're gonna hit offsite offset plane I'm gonna go up 20 and a half inches now that's max is not including the tool holder and the the stubby holders are inch and three quarters now that isn't including either any stick out of the, your longest tool so you could draw another plane in there how far you need to stick out the tool if you have to go down to like two inches or something with like a half inch end mill or something along them lines and that'll give you then you can hit inspect and see yes I can only go 18 and three quarters part height wise now like my machine has a carousel tool changer over here so you'd have to definitely watch out for that either hand load the longest tool jog the table around but it's just some considerations but this gives you a good reference on what you can fit into your machine before you even go out to the shop and start uh, messing with it you can do it right on right in the CAD now after a while you'll just start memorizing these numbers and you'll be able to do it quickly and easily right at when you look at the quote if you can fit it into your machine or not. Now, so now we just gotta save it. I'm gonna save this into my fixed drain folder. And as you can see here, I got stuff labeled a little, a little different. I name it by uh, 100, 200, and 300. 100 is like the base components of a machine. Zero, zero to 200 are the base components of the machine and I use 0 to 99 for assemblies since fusion doesn't distinguish between assemblies and parts they are the same file extension now you could use the same ones in like SolidWorks or Inventor where they change the actual f file extension is different but NX uses a PRT that are for again for assemblies and parts. So 
I see I got 100 in there already. I'll name it F -O -1, FX101. And then next week, I'll show you guys this, we'll build the assembly with a, a subplate and a couple vices to see what we can fit on here. All right, please comment, like, subscribe. Tell me if you liked it or hated it. Anything I could do better? Thank you.